Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another Linux first impression. Today we'll be looking at a Slackware distribution called Slackle. I initially was going to install Slackware and do my first impression based on that. However, I ran into numerous problems with Slackware got very frustrated with it and decided to move on and see if there was a better version or flavor that was based on Slackware that might leave you with a better taste in your mouth than what I was finding with the base version of Slackware. First, I want to say Slackware is a great start for a distribution. If what you want is only what they have to offer. I say that because it's one of the oldest distributions out there, over 19 years old. It's been around for a while. I even remember installing Slackware many, many years ago when I was trying different flavors to try to see which would work on my hardware. We're talking in the mid-90s. Nowadays, however, I've found that Slackware, while is stable, isn't the latest, and if you're looking for packages that are outside of their library, you're going to have a difficult time. I immediately ran into issues getting FFmpeg to work. I couldn't get uh, Flash to operate properly. I couldn't get my webcam software to work correctly. There were so many issues that I ran into right away that, yes, if I would have spent time and effort and all that, I could have maybe made it work. But I don't have time. I don't have that. I don't want to put in that effort. Right now, I'm here to throw it on, see how difficult it is to install, and give you guys an update of what my first impressions are and first impressions are always the most important impressions. Out of the box, Slackware seemed to be a very good OS. Uh, the text-based install was nothing to be afraid of. Quite simple to get things prepped, ready to go. I think the most the scariest thing of any distribution, in my opinion, is that whole formatting and prepping the hard drive and getting it ready so especially if you have other operating systems on your system you don't want to mess them up so you don't want to mess up your your partitioning etc other than that everything else was pretty much very straightforward out of the box uh, nouveau worked without an issue but i just had so many other issues just trying to get ffmpeg or anything else to operate i gave up Onward and upward. Slackle is a Greek distribution. As it says right here, it's a Linux distribution and live CD based on Slackware and Salix. And one nice thing about Slackle is it does go past the text based install and goes on to a GUI based install. Um, I did have a problem when I first installed it because I was trying to install from my USB thumb drive. The, there is a problem with the install going through that. It continually hung whenever it would start to search out the hard drives that were ready. As soon as I moved it over to a DVD, no issues at all. To get it installed, it went on through. If we go ahead and look at what software comes with Slackle, we'll find that it does have the QD4 desktop designer information. Uh, very little in education that came with it, at least in that category, Marble is on it. If we go into games, there were no games on this system. I installed two just to take a look, see how they ran. Extreme Tux Racer, one of my favorites, oldies but a goodie. And I saw Frets on Fire and was just curious to see what it is. It seems to be some sort of like a Guitar Hero type style game in Lin within Linux. As I said, I installed those, it didn't come with them. Under graphics, we've got the typical Gwen View, K-Snapshot, Carbon, Color Paint, etc., etc. 
It is missing, if you'll notice, though, the GIMP. Although very simple to use, I'll be explaining that down here in these two applications in just a moment. We'll move on to Internet. It came with Firefox. I had to upgrade some of the KDE applications because it came with a, a light version of some of the KDE applications. And I like Conquer. Conquer is one of my favorite file managers. I have never gotten used to Dolphin. I've always enjoyed Conquer, so I always make sure it's there for myself. Of course, it comes with Instant Messenger style applications. Now, you may see Skype here, and that's another huge headache and, and just pain in my tuchus. Let me tell you, I attempted to install Skype. It acted like it was, except when I was done. It never worked. Couldn't figure something like that out. Never had a problem in a lot of other distributions. So while well, it installed the icon, makes you think it's there, it does nothing. We move on to multimedia. It did come with Clementine Music Player, whereas Slackware out of the box came with just the Amarok, Handbrake, K3B, VLC. I may have installed Handbrake, I'm not quite sure. I can't remember, and I didn't want to reinstall to, to check. I did install GUCV View, and I'm not using it right now because I'm having a terrible time with FFmpeg encoding the video and keeping the sound and video intact. I tried even just to blur out my previous video so that you didn't have to look at it. It drives me nuts when voices and video don't match up. I'm not going to try and fix it. It was such a headache, I'm just redoing it going forward. I did try record my desktop, which was also another huge failure. While it installed without a problem, it just doesn't work. The screen's frozen, everything looks like it's going in slow motion, except it looks like it's taking one out of every 70 frames. It was terrible. I didn't bother with it. One big negative with Slackwell, or Slackle, Slackware in general, I was very disappointed in its multimedia. Like I even said, I couldn't even get Flash to install properly. I'm not even sure how Slackle did it, but they were able to get it installed natively with their version, and it works fine for viewing, which is nice because it's always good when it works out of the box. We move on to Office. I want to make note this came with Caligra instead of OpenOffice or LibreOffice. This is the first time I've run into Caligra, and I want to open this up just to give you an idea of what it looks like. If those who haven't seen it, you choose a blank document, for instance, use this template, and it comes up with this look and feel. Uh, I haven't played with it too much. I'm not sure if this is page one and page two, or if we're looking at a brochure style layout, but it is interesting to see how we can choose our fonts, the size of our fonts, etc., paragraph settings, all of these things over here. You, got plenty of screen real estate you might as well utilize it and then of course you have what you're familiar with the file edit view etc over on the other side so it does come with Caligra instead of LibreOffice or OpenOffice we move on of course a lot of key, key applications here and nothing more really to point out I'll leave it there for a moment for you to take a look and we move on settings and system pretty much the same thing you're always used to seeing. Now one great feature of Slackle that I thought was a big improvement over Slackware because it really didn't come with any type of package managing software and that's a difficult thing nowadays. If we look here we've got two package managers Sorcery and G Slapped. The nice thing about G Slapped is when you're looking for packages, and my package list is empty right now, but, um, eh, and I hit the wrong button. While we, uh, all that updates, we'll just move on. <laughs> Sorcery is a great way to install Slackware packages from source. 
What I have found with Slackware is you got to have a lot of different ways to get to them, get to the packages. You have to, some packages are great. You know, they've got a TGZ file that works well. Others you have to install from source code. I personally don't like a mixed environment where you have bin packages and source code packages because it is a nightmare to maintain the dependencies. And that's a big headache I had with Slackware. If I wanted to install GUVC view, for instance, it would say, okay, here's a package for it, which I search and search and search, finally found it, and then it's missing all kinds of dependencies. If you search in here for GUC view, you should be able to find that it's here, and you can see that it has dependencies, I guess no dependencies listed right now, maybe that was a bad choice. Let's think of something else. Let's try M player. I think that's one that we don't have here. We do M player and we choose one of these. Here are all the requ required dependencies. Now, if we install M player from here, it's going to look for all these dependencies. It's going to go ahead and fix them and install them for us. That is a big help because in the Slackware I found, if I found an M player TGZ file, told it to install package it would then fail and tell me I'm missing all of these and to go get them myself like I'm some super package finder no that's why I have Arch, that's why I have Gentoo that's why there's Debian because they find your dependencies, they put them on there and they make it work right away now certain things like GUCV view and others I had to bounce back and forth between sorcery and G slapped because there are some applications that weren't available through GSAP, I'd find them in here, have to compile them, and then I'd move on. Now, one issue, though, I found, for instance, is I was going to try to do M, uh, FFmpeg with an MP4. It says that I need GPAC to be able to do that. So I went over here and I did a quick search on GPAC and did a s hit it, and there's nothing. So I came up here and said, okay, let's look for GPAC. Oh, great, here's one right here. Well, that's what I sort of need. So I tried to install it. It got three quarters of the way of processing it and then failed on the compilation. Not very good because there's very little support out there that I have found that's up to date for Slackware. Most of what I found for Slackware, it's pointing to references of floppy disks and systems that are so far out of date that no one would be using them today. I don't mean to be so hard about Slackware on this. I'm just so disappointed. I thought it would... I remember using it many years ago and thought it was great. Maybe in my na naiveness. Maybe just not knowing better. But it does seem to be stable. It does have what you need for basic functionality. Just don't plan on going out of the box. There aren't very many good places to find applications that I have found. I found a few different sites that would give me their own repositories. But once again, you're working with repositories that you don't feel or you don't know are safe. And therefore, I feel a little uncomfortable going away a lot of times from different repos that aren't sanctioned by the distribution. It, it just doesn't make me feel good about that sort of thing. Otherwise, Slackle, Slackware, uh, Slacks, a couple other different v versions uh, are out there. I was going to do a different distri distribution. And if we go to distrowatch.com, not org, and we do a quick search on Slackware based distributions. We choose Slackware, and of course I always change this to 64-bit architecture because I want to make sure it's going to work with everything proper, and always make sure that your status is active. We submit our query, and we look here, and I did look at Slacks, but it didn't look like it was more for installing on a computer as much as it was just running off of a USB drive. I looked at a few of these others. I have looked at Vector Linux in the past. That one seems to be very well written, I, if I remember right. And Slackle, I thought I'd give it a try because I hadn't looked at it before. And I did try 
Plamo Linux. It's a Japanese Linux version or distribution, and it was quite interesting. The only problem that I had was that there was no easy way for me to switch it to English characters. It was all in Japanese, and that may, I mean I can figure out like in Ututo a, a little bit of Spanish to make to figure stuff out, but in Plamo, it was nah. I wasn't going to figure anything out in Plamo. And that's one thing I do like about things or distributions such as Slackle is Greek. And if anybody's looked at the Greek alphabet, it doesn't look like what we're used to. Yet, it was very simple and easy to look at. And if you look at the Cyrillic alphabet that Russia uses with the Calculate Linux, that was an awesome distribution. I liked looking at that with Gen 2 based distributions. But it was also easy to look at and figure out because they had allowed for English to be part of the defaults. I'll try to keep this short now, so I'm going to go ahead and call this my first impression of Slackle and Slackware. I thank you all for watching. I thank you all for listening. I appreciate the comments, and I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry you can't look at my pretty mug, but I figure I would rather not look at someone's mouth that's not matching up to the words and hear them than to deal with that. So it is what it is. And I'll leave you with my common phrase of greeting and salutation. If it's morning, evening, noon or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. And I'm glad you watched. Thank you very much. And I look forward to maybe a little bit better distribution for next week to go over. Have a great day. Bye.